Hello everyone, yes, it's already getting on my nerves, but welcome to another episode of the AVS show. You're watching me on the TV. Make sure to subscribe to the page and also go on our Instagram. What? The ABS, ABS show. Yes. One word. The ABS show, baby. Don't we you guys just love TLC? You know, like this <laughs> nice, Purple old school, gray, fresh, you know, pajama gray, shirt fresh. that my, I mean, my you, best friend Charlie got you know, on today. But you don't have to touch me, boo. You can just say, you know. <laughs> I just wanted to feel the silkiness, and you know. I just love the wig. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you gonna call her out like Boop. that? Why that she has to call me out like that? Whatever, she's so fabulous. All right, with we my love bang you wig. for tuning Shout in. Shout out to my hairstylist. You know what I'm saying? Playing right, all day. We we love you guys for tuning in. We're gonna dig into the topic. Who's who, who's going first? I think I'm gonna go all first. All right, Dora, give it to us. Okay, so the crisis in Cameroon has been taking a dangerous turn of late, and even more dangerous recently. About 21 people were killed in the southern region that has been suffering a lot of oppression, including a three-month-old that was still breastfeeding and the mother. They said the baby was shot in the head. Wow. And um, some others in the village. What is the crisis? Okay, so the crisis going on in Cameroon right now is uh, many people of this from the southern re region of Cameroon, which is also the Anglophone region mm. of Cameroon, have been complaining that they're being marginalized, they're not being taken care of by the mid predominantly Francophone government, mm. centralized government. Mm. So most of the government in uh, Cameroon is French speaking, uh, Francophone, and they say they cater mostly to the Francophone um, yeah. region. We talked about that here yeah. um, some time uh, back. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so they said it's, it's getting, you know, more dangerous. Um, uh, back in January, um, Ayuk Tabe, who um, was actually a professor from my alma mater, American University of Nigeria. He was the lead of this uh, movement called the Ambazonian Movement, mm. who, a separatist movement which uh, was trying to pull away from Franco Francophone Cameroon. And um, they deported him. The Cameroon soldiers actually came into Abuja, kidnapped him from the venue, and bundled him out of the country. He's currently under arrest in Cameroon after being taken out. Um, so this killings now is just kind of steaming up the crisis, you know, making it worse. They, a lot of Cameroonians from the southern region have already started mo evacuating. They've been moving into the eastern region of Nigeria because that's where the border is East. closest. Right. Yes, so a lot of Cameroonians have been taking refuge. There's so many um, refugee camps in the eastern region of Nigeria, people for the running away. And it's kind of scary. Many people are kind of, predicting that this may end up in a civil war. Mm -hmm. Civil war, civil, civil war. war. I mm. love this idea of protest, and I think it's one of the great things that citizens can do to get what they want. If this is such a big deal, this is just my opinion, mm. how about they separate and become another country, country on their own? Right? Because I, we were the same country as Togo and you know, they separated. I think if it's a huge problem, because they, they've been going through this for a long time. For a very long I think time. this is separate, be their own country, you know, get their own presidents who will understand Represents them because, their interests. listen, tribalism and all of those things can be a big deal, you know? People care for what they care for. They don't, I'm getting goosebumps because <laughs> as you say this, you know, Nigeria also has its own separate Listen, yes. as mm -hmm. he's talking, that was exactly what I was thinking because mm -hmm. we spoke about that here too. And I agree mm -hmm. with Charlie. I think the same should, thing should happen in Nigeria as well, just separate. It makes yeah. no sense yes, to keep. That's just, it's just my opinion in it. My I'm not in politics. Is so, that, you know. uh, yeah, but my fear is that whenever there's the movement for separation, there must be war. Yeah. But yeah. there doesn't have to be war. Trust me, that's how it works Nigeria's in Africa. Case, in Nigeria's case, the first civil war in Nigeria started because of, of the tribalism. Do you understand? It was basically because of how tribalism got blown out of proportion based off of a couple of coups, right? Why didn't it go through? In fact, if you read into history, the northern region of Nigeria has always said they were not part of the rest, well, even when the, Br the British amalgamated us, right? Mm. But the only reason why that war was won, no victor, no vanquished, right, was because oil is in the southern, southern part. part right. well, you know Nigeria. Nigerians love their so oil. So that's why there's going to be a war, because you're not mm -hmm. going to tell people that have been feeding off of the oil money that, bye oh, bye. now mm -hmm. you don't have mm -hmm. no right to this oil, because that's even part of the fight, you know, of, of all the many injustices going on in Nigeria. One of the fight is that the people that own the oil where the oil is they, they have they no control of the, the national, money yeah, yeah they the have no control route. of the oil no control of the goods it's just politicians that are taking control of their oil so uh, of course they want to be separate so they can now be in charge of their own life 
for um, for what's going on in Cameroon is that they've even been ignored. Do you yeah. understand? What because exactly do they want? It's like, so they, just want, they want basic amenities. Basic like amenities, francophone Cameroon resources. only, you know, only say only takes care of francophone Cameroon. Yeah. And the government is majorly francophone, so they take care of those speaking French and basically ignore those speaking English as if they're different, as if they're a different country. Do you understand? And they want to impose their French way of learning, their French systems on but the if anglophone. It's, if it's, if it's one country why don't they all learn everything why do, why do i have to be on do things the french way and do this person do things the english way the why can't um, we all just do it together why doesn't the french for. learn english and why doesn't the english oh, learn yeah, french it's not that easy it's, it's not that simple more. it's like even but here even here in america we have the east coast the west coast the south and the midwest mm -hmm. everybody the way everybody lives is Function all is different, different. Yeah. you understand it's all the same english but for america we all get the same rights Overall. You don't get the same, do we no, really? No, because for state. America, states by states, it's things different. are different. I mean, you can still yeah, marry your cousin in some of the southern states. You can't right. marry your cousin in New York. I mean, yeah, but what I mean is overall basic necessities, the things that these people are fighting That's about, cool. we in America, we all have well, yeah, the I same. Get you, I get yeah. what you're saying basics, now. Yeah. And because so they should withhold their taxes then? Wait. No, yeah. no, they can't go to their the, the problem is no, the people that are being <laughs> marginalized, they're not getting anything. Mm -hmm. you understand? They're not getting uh, basic economic structures that, okay, so they said that the, um, the Silicon va Valley of Cameroon no, is... What I'm saying, if you keep paying the taxes and you're not getting what you're getting from it, didn't Cardi B even made a, a, a post <laughs> about it the, the last uh, few days ago? If you keep paying the taxes, keep paying it, but you're not getting electricity, you water, right. you know, Come up with something. There has to be. That's why the, that's, that's why, why they are protesting. That's why the protest yeah. started. Mm -hmm. And um, Ayuk Tabe that started this movement to talk about separating. He started this because he's like, yeah, like, this is this is ridiculous. People are not getting what they need. Mm -hmm. So obviously we're not part of Cameroon. So we might as well, you know, move out. Like let's be on our own. And that's why the violence has now started because so many people are, you know, very feeling very strongly about this movement. And Paul Bia's soldiers, people that are loyal to him and his government, are not taking it like. Were you talking about um, Silicon Valley? You were okay, saying yes, something? Okay, yeah. I was saying the Cameroon version. This, the Cameroon version of Silicon Valley is in the southern region. Mm -hmm. And okay. um, earlier, earlier this year or last year, they actually shut down their internet. You mm. know, yeah. so it's like you saying that they should not pay their taxes anymore. They're already suffering enough, enough for just yeah. speaking English. Wow. So how yeah. much more would they suffer if they don't even pay taxes at all? This just right. sounds so bad. I really hope that it doesn't get too crazy and it doesn't right. turn into a civil war. Right. But they really need to come to a conclusion with this because as Charlie said, it has been going on for, for long way time. too long. All right, we're going to move on to the next topic. Um, good luck to Cameroon. Um, yeah, who had... Yes. yes. I got mm -hmm. the next topic. And before I keep going, I just want to apologize if I say the name wrong. Um, I'm going to talk about Zimbabwe TV personality, Ruveneko. Rubneko, I think that's how you say it. Yeah. Anyway, she's facing arrest because um, for her hair. <laughs> she's so beautiful. Charlie, <laughs> don't do no, that. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding, y'all. Don't come for me. All right, I love the makeup. Yeah, she will come for you because she's known to be like you Flat know. She's queen. yes. What's the yes. story? So the story is that um, she, a businessman in Zimbabwe, fit. Um, sued her for defamation of character mm. because uh -oh. she said something about him on air and so on and so she sued him and the guy won. He so did. when the guy won, she was supposed to apologize to him on, you know, like if you defame somebody publicly, you also have to apologize publicly. publicly. Home girl <laughs> definitely was sticking to what she said because she did not want to apologize. So what she did was create her Twitter handle has 129,000 followers. But what she then did was create another Twitter handle that only has 101 followers. So guess the handle that she apologized with. Yeah, of course, one. now, 101. 101. Apology 101. Yeah. But that, that's, she doesn't know that people can still screenshot it, and it was so... We will still talk about it on the ABO show. I, I, I mean, I she think wasn't the one that did it. But who exactly is she? The what does she do? She's a radio and TV personality. personality. She's been doing it for a while. Um, she started while she was in college. She was part of the radio mm. at, at the college that she went what to. What exactly and did she, she say though? Um, it doesn't say what she says. It just says that you know th it's apologize. been a big okay. thing where she's been going back and forth to, in court with the guy, and the guy won. And what she was supposed to do was. 
apologized, apologized publicly. And then instead of her apologizing on her main Twitter account with 129,000 followers, she apologized to the Twitter account with the 101 followers. So basically, she has complied with the court order because she has apologized. The only difference is that she apologized on a different She's account. A page. So now the guy whose name is. Tafadzwa Musarira. I'm Wait, so is sorry with these again? names. <laughs> They're from Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe I'm okay. so sorry with these names. <laughs> anyway, so now she's facing six months in jail. Wow. So, I mean, what do you guys think? Do you... Because the guy's saying that she has defied her court order, and she's saying, no, I complied. I did apologize on Twitter. So, um, what do you guys think? Do you guys think that, you know? I, I, think, I think she actually apologized, but she didn't do it the smart way. What she would have done was she would have worked with a smart IT person mm -hmm. and make sure her account looked like it was hacked and probably deleted it from Twitter for a while, apologize, then get her, her account back after two weeks. She should have contacted me. But oh, oh, like now it's too late. But being arrested for six months for defam defamation of character, maybe it's part of their law. We don't know. But to you me, see, this is what ah. you get for running your mouth. Okay, listen. <laughs> as much as I run my mouth on the ABA show, I know what to say and what not to say. Are you sure? Mm -hmm. No, sometimes I do, you know? <laughs> but sometimes too, when you're on radio and you're on um, TV talking and talking about celebrities or people, you, you can take it. You can take it personal. You really can because this is for entertainment purposes, so y'all. We have, and she she doesn't make the news. We don't make the news. We just report it. Yeah, so if you, you don't opinion. want us to report it, if you don't want her to report it, don't do it. It's simple. But Stay in your room and don't do it. Don't come out and do it. So but as long as you're doing it, I'm gonna talk about it. So you know? actually, mm -hmm. um, I looked up what you just asked, like you know what the case starts over, and yeah. it has to do with like Mugabe and stuff. So like. She had people on air on her show, mm -hmm. and you know they spoke about politics stuff. And the guy is saying that she did not protect him during the one-hour program, and made it seem as if that he had bulldozed his way onto the show. Mm -hmm. So that's why he took her to court. So I guess this is serious stuff. When you're talking about politics, it's serious. No, but you can't just defamation mm. of character. Get politics. Mm. And the guy won. I mean, he it's won. Oh, he won in the court. So if he won in the court, oh, then... Lord, right, that means she was wrong. Me, I just feel like this man's ego is just bruised. I think she was <laughs> very so smart. Saying. Like, um, in, in journalism, right, if, mm -hmm. you're, if you have any platform, you have to stand by what you say. If not, your people are not going to take you seriously. Yes. Do you understand? So she she obeyed the law. She You wanted an apology. 101 followers or 126 you got followers. It. It doesn't matter. You got your apology. Mm -hmm. Take it. She has obeyed court order. She has followed due process. But her, I, th I, I think I, I respect her for standing on what she said. Yeah. You know, because that's what, that's how you get rumors of fake news and don't trust the media and all of that because people have. Because you wish you watch she, wish yeah. you what yeah. you're saying. Stand by what you say, but also follow the law. So she apologized. And nobody can fault her for that, but as a journalist in her craft, she's standing on what she said, and I respect her for that. I respect her. All right, okay. we're gonna. Now we're gonna she's standing for six months in the prison. Oh, yeah, shit. I no. think if she has a good lawyer. She, even me, I can defend them. Don't you, oh. <laughs> with what safety? <laughs> hmm? According to who? All right, safety? so let's move on to the next topic. Did you guys hear? Um, the news about Brymo. I mean, did I see it? So Brymo <laughs> literally showed his ass. So in his new latest music video, yeah. Heya, yeah. um, he literally showed his ass. He, or he showed his ass. Showed his, his black ass. ass. Yes. Oh gosh. Oh my and god. In his music video, the music video was shot by November Production. <laughs> um, and if you see the video, you can go on YouTube and, and watch the video. He He's that? wearing nothing but a G string it's with a little. F um, flag cloth in front. I don't, I don't appreciate it. This so, African, no, that's what I saw. What I saw is what I'm telling the people. <laughs> um, it was a G string um, type of um, It was outfit. like a G string made out of like cane, cane or whatever like it is. You, know, know, and, and, and you guys know. The only thing he was carrying was his cassava. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then and I didn't see much cassava in either, the right? <laughs> and in the video, he was walking towards a piano. He shot the music video in Lagos. Lagos, right. Um, he sat next to a piano thinking he was John legend whatever <laughs> and he poured his heart out and twitter nigerians <laughs> i mean he got mixed reviews some mm. nigerians loved it and some hated it mm. what do you guys think about the video the nigerians that appreciate creativity were the ones that appreciated his movement you guys mm. are not ready for this level 
of Expo. artistic expression. Okay. Mm. Speak, my sister. <laughs> okay. All he right. wants to show his booty. Kim Kardashian. I've seen Kim Kardashian's inside and out, and nobody's mad at her. Only Nigerians want to come for this man that is just creative in his own way. Okay. So you saw his booty. Get over it. There's a very thin line between creative and madness in this situation. Nah. In this situation, uh, no. like. I did not, like, when I saw it on my timeline, I literally thought it was a crazy man. I literally, I saw it, I took a glimpse of it on my timeline, and I thought it was, like, one of those crazy, you know, in Africa when people go crazy and they just walk around naked? Yeah, that's I what I literally, this is what he said, this is what he said. I decided to appear how my phobias dressed before the arrival of colonization mm -hmm. in our nation. With that being said, I loved the song. The, the song was very emotional. The lyrics. the lyrics in the song was very powerful. Message. I loved it. Mm -hmm. You know, when Kanye did that video, Famous, with all them naked people laying on that bed, mm. we said it was art artistic. Mm -hmm. We saw some art texts, um, you know, in it. With him, I didn't see it. I didn't see the art, art in it. I did it. Let me show you why. It was poorly executed for me, for my taste. All I saw was... Black, black, black moving. <laughs> <laughs> like that movie, the ghost must be crazy. The ghost you know must be crazy. <laughs> and and maybe the setting, it. maybe the se maybe I don't understand it well, but for me, the setting was a little weird. Maybe do it in the village. Show us how it's done yeah. in the village, you know? You know, tell a story behind it. You know, because sometimes when you do stuff like this, people tend to talk about the wrong... Now we're over here talking about your ass. What we, should be, what we should be talking about the message, you yeah. know? So, Brymo, all the cool, tell me what, you know, um, <laughs> if you do, this is not what you were supposed to do. Personally, oh, I love the song. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh my God, that song that's my song. song. I know. Oh my God. So, personally, I love the video. I love the lyrics. The video was, uh, hey, maybe I need to go see it again. Maybe. You know I what? don't know. I think it was definitely like a PR stunt. I think it was done for attention, and I think that that was your goal, and they executed it well because everybody's talking about it. Maybe it was art in his end, but as Charlie said, it wasn't done properly because I didn't see art, any artistic in it. I was like, what the hell is this when I saw it? It was very confusing yeah. to me. He's one of our most misunderstood, talented artists it's in the obvious. Yeah. Yeah. They call his music alternative. Yeah, they call his music alternative. His whole style, his whole approach to everything is just different from different. what... It's always been different from what Yeah, but there are a lot of artists to. like that that do things in an artistic way that we understand, like Adekule, Go, yeah, and, and when they do things that we understand, it. and well, it seems saying, normal it seems rational understand it. There yeah. people me we're talking about half of the, half of the internet that, didn't understand people, it you people okay. but a lot, to like, others mm, a lot of people were laughing a lot of people said this one a madness but yeah. some other people still really got the message got it. Yeah. because people got it. the some fact that he it. took off his clothes and if you listen to the lyrics he was also talking about the past the present the ups and downs yes. of the society mm -hmm. time they pass us by that's what he was saying you know he was trying to call all our attention to reality and the need to understand that most things are vanity yes and what that's what he said he actually said that vanity. although we reside most of us reside in the city abroad whatever some of our thoughts are village like mm. so he was trying to connect the two Dots. to get the thing is, if you're going to dress up like that, like a, a village guy or a bushman, mm. because that's what he described it as, then play a, a, a more local instrument. You know, mm. I don't, I don't know. Maybe I need to go back and watch it. It was just, it was just, it disconnected for me because not totally though. Not uh, mm. for me. <laughs> it reminded me of yeah. what's that girl's name, Vanessa something, and she played MD. going their way downtown and passing by. You know that song? Yeah, know that and song. in the video. But she was more dressed. She was but more in the dressed. video, she was dressed in Western clothes and she was playing a piano and she was in a Western world. Yeah, 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 the yeah. piano was going around in a Western world. So I definitely agree with what you're saying. Like, it has to all be in sync and it just wasn't in sync. But I guess maybe that's what he's trying to tell us that we're not in sync. In sync. But sometimes in art as well, you don't appreciate it until oh, time, yeah. you know. So let's yeah. give it time. Until the Western world appreciates it. When they give him <laughs> Grammy now, you people will uh, love his. Everybody butt. say. And uh, what's his name again? Brian Moore is my brider. That's what you people say. By no, the time I, he gets I, it. Please put some powder on that. <laughs> my friend, where did he come from now? I came from Mr. Easy. Where did he come Aquaba, from? Aquaba, I know be your brider. <laughs> oh, yeah, Mr. Easy's Nigerian. Mr. Easy's Nigerian. He said brider. But he's a Nigerian. He said brider. He's Nigerian. That's where I got the word from. They're not mad at you. They're mad at his ass. He showed his behind on screen, and now the channel, you know, be mad at you. They're not mad at you. So we're going to end here, guys. Let us know in the comments your thoughts on these topics. No, we're not going to end here. 
here. Um, Timani got one. The ass got Charlie on. Yes. I'm sorry. We have one more to go. One more. All right. Brian Mo, you see what you done caused Brian over here, Brian Mo? Brian Mo, Mo. Mitchell, in the show. <laughs> in the show, yeah. Charlie's right. confused. He money's confused. No, Point no. is, no more ass showing. Please. No more ass showing. <laughs> 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 Viewers' discretion should be advised before we click on that. Yes, exactly. Exactly. But it wasn't. It wasn't. Exactly. All right, Timani, what, what do we have next? What we have is we're rounding up with a good news, and it's a big one for Africa. Mm -hmm. The kind of things we talk about to represent the black culture. Ebony Life TV. Um, CEO Mo Adi, uh, Abudu just signed a contract with Sony Pictures Television and they're going to be having three scripted series to represent the African culture. And one of the most important ones that will take place is the first one that will be representing the Dahomey female warriors from the Republic of Bene, right? Oh, I thought you were about to say Wakanda. Oh my no, God. No, this one is real. <laughs> this is that real. God, I, I had female warrior. I'm thinking That's Wakanda. Female warriors of the homies. I did not hear this, but I'm so happy you brought this up because just this week, um, I was I was doing some research online mm. and I came across some of the female fighters from warriors from back West in Africa, the day right? from West Africa, like um, Yasantwa. There's another one. I never even knew. I mean, this is on Wikipedia unless it's a lie. Mm -hmm. But there's also one, I forgot her name, I think Queen Nana or something, and she apparently took a ship from Ghana, and she's the person that went to Jamaica and fought for independence in Jamaica. I never knew that. Wow. Like, so I was, like, looking up a bunch of these stories online. So this, it's definitely a good thing for mm -hmm. them to bring this up. I always say that in order for Africa to arise, we have to change our history. Mm -hmm. The way our history is written and thought to us needs to be changed because... Yeah. I did go to school in Ghana for a little bit, and besides Yasantua, I don't remember them teaching me about any other History any other female warriors, warriors but there right. was definitely more than one there of them. There are some strong women so, out there. Mm -hmm. Women are taking over. They are they're about to run the world, like Beyonce said. And for them to share light on this, I think this is awesome. This is amazing. Right. And I'm mm -hmm. here for it. Are you here for it? I'm uh, here for it. It's based on true story. I'm mm -hmm. here for it. And I'm also here for it for what it means for Ebony life. Now, uh, you know, I was in Nigeria when this kicked off. I was in Nigeria when she was auditioning, trying to get concrete content. content. What I've seen about Ebony life is she keeps calling it African flair, but everybody's there faking accents. Ooh. You know, so like, okay. uh, and I don't appreciate that. You can't talk, call something authentically African and you're forcing people to be, you know, posh. flash posh. Everybody mm. she hires has a British accent all her talk shows she has a british accent herself i get it you lived abroad but if you say that you're 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 trying to make an african diversity an african centered mm -hmm. channel then let's see more africans are not this wishy-washy middle class everybody has been abroad type of thing because that's basically the con where what her but can is. you blame her though because th wow. that's probably what the viewers want that's, that's what a what the viewers what? want, then mm -hmm. don't call it African. Because oh, that, really? that's not African. You have, no, 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 you can't tell people a dream. If you're going to be authentically African, then be authentically African. Because those Africans that have managed to live abroad, unfortunately, I'm sorry to break it to you, you're not authentically African. But do you know that even Africa doesn't have one accent? So if you're saying that, mm. what, what does well, African I mean, even sound be, like? You I, can I don't understand. It. You can but differentiate I between an African accent, right? No matter what dialect of African I accent disagree. is. You I can't disagree. Know. I, I don't, don't, I don't like when people you sometimes tell me or whatever that Why oh you're you trying to so, you're trying Why to you sound like trying to i'm not trying like to sound like anybody you know what i mean we come in different shades we come in different mm. sizes we we talk differently even in ghana we all don't have the same accent yeah, yeah but i get your point you know, i sorry i get your point though yeah. because what she just said is it just came into my head i just observed it because while i was living in nigeria for a mm -hmm. while i watched ebony live tv i watched some of the shows and the presenters they're beautiful people but i realized that all of them have western education mm -hmm. are you trying to tell me that all the people who went to school in nigeria Can't be on your channel. Channel. No, exactly. you're right you're right i, I get and your point because most I of them were in london and america you know and they're back home they're on tv what about the people who are home exactly. you know what i mean especially for I the fact point. that this channel is being the people that watch gstv the middle class people don't have they're not sitting down waiting uh, waiting to watch Africa and the people that are interested in African oriented are the masses and those are people that don't have access that are going to be straining their ears to understand what everybody yes, is saying. Yes, do you understand what they're saying because I feel like now that you you explained it, mm. 
I'm yeah. getting it now. Because yeah. even in Ghana, you if, you have, if you have just a little bit accent, they'll put you on TV. Exactly. So, it's true. It's true. And then another thing is that um, I remember back then, and I remember this because even me, I auditioned, she tried to do the, um, Desperate Housewives. Mm. And um, she was trying to, you know, form it, uh, uh, you know, it take the script from Desperate Housewives. It was a partnership between her and ABC. They okay. actually sold her awesome. the script. She wanted to do an African version of it. And it didn't hold up. Why? Well, because the audience, like you're not going to have people oh, okay. in so Africa. They couldn't relate. Yeah, they, they can't push. relate. Exactly. Right. They couldn't relate to it. So I'm hoping that this means that she's taking a turn, like she's observed where the market mm -hmm. is. And then again, I mean, she's a she's a smart businesswoman. I think she should uh, she should target the masses mm -hmm. instead of just a portion of okay. the yeah. masses. I, masses. I, but you I know totally understand. Oh, I totally understand what you're saying, and I don't totally understand what you're saying as well. But at the end of the day, her TV, her channel is still on and if her channel is still on it means people are watching if she's still getting ads running through that means people are watching people are paying for ad on it so I definitely agree with what Charlie's saying that that's what the people want and when I go to Ghana I experience this Africans do not want quality in Africa Africans that live in Africa want what's going on in America mm -hmm. it's like I go I go to Ghana and I go sit at a chop bar to eat I'm drinking coconut and the Ghanaians that live in Ghana are like ah American girl like you, what are you doing sitting here? And I look at them like, what do you mean what am I doing sitting here? Isn't it a food? Like, why should I not be eating food? food? When, I, when I'm in Ghana, all I want to... I got this ar in this argument with my whole family when I, last time I was in Ghana three weeks ago. Mm. Sunday after church, they said, let's go for lunch. I said, okay, let's go. They said they're going to Noble House to eat Chinese. I said, me, I want fufu and a ben kwai. They said, no, we want Noble House. I said, okay, I'm going to go to the chop bar and I'm going to eat my fufu and a ben kwai. You guys go eat. They said, no, you're not thinking family, you're thinking selfish. I'm like, you guys live in Africa. And you want to go eat Chinese, Chinese, Chinese. food. <laughs> so I understand you because you're like, you love Africa. You're an African woman. You want those things to show. Mm. But unfortunately, the people that live in Africa, if she there was somebody on the show talking African dialect, like, hi, my friend, nobody would watch it. But it she's wouldn't also be good. probably enough. thinking international wise. Right. You know, she's probably thinking but then international wise. Do you wise. want to misrepresent Africa? Because then mm. what you get is that a whole bunch of white people are going to be like, oh, every mm. African I meet is going to be as, but educational, in Ghana, as but educated as this person. But, in, but that's not the reality because yes. if we're being realistic and facing facts, more than half of Africa is illiterate and does yeah. not talk the even, even in Ghana, only 30%. In Ghana, only 30% are educated. But it's funny that I go to Ghana. Where did you get that from? Check it online. I'm going to check after check the it show. Online. We got to go <laughs> Okay. But let me just Gee. make one last point. What you said is good. I understand you about the ratings that people are watching the show. Mm. But in this day and age, people always find something that they can relate to. That's why social media hype is better than TV hype these mm -hmm. days. Because mm -hmm. people find comedians, funny people who speak their accents, who act crazy and do things that they can understand. And then they get a high rating on social media. Do you so guys, I think that's why she's going back to history. Do you guys agree with what Timani is saying? Let us know in the comments. What? Thank you guys for having this conversation with me. Thank you for tuning in. Until next time you're watching me on TV, this is the ABA Show. Bye. Thanks for watching. And if you liked this episode, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. See you next time.